This is the video installation instruction for the Pinellas Power Products 4 function wireless remote control for Honda's new fuel injected EU 7000 IS. To start off with, there are at least three versions of the fuel injected 7000 IS that I'm aware of. There is this version, which is, I will refer to it as the early US version. And you can identify it real quickly by the outlet pattern. You'll notice that there are only two 20 amp outlets. What I will refer to as the late US version has four 20 amp outlets and they're all GFCI. So you would have the 240 amp outlet, then two 20 amp GFCI, then two more 20 amp GFCI, and then the 30 amp round marine or round RV style plug would be in this location. Then the next or the third version would be the Canadian which the outlets are the same as this however there is a rather large circuit breaker in this location. My kit will work with all three of these versions. I will be installing the kit on this generator anywhere that there is a difference between this one and the other generators. I will explain the difference and explain how to hook it up. But the first step is going to be to go ahead and remove the handlebars. Incidentally, this strap is strictly a safety device in case the generator starts to rock around on me or something while I'm working on it. It won't hit the ground. To remove the handlebars, you'll remove the shoulder bolts. There's one on each side and they are identical. Then simply squeeze the latches and lift the handlebars off. Then the front plastic cover. There are two bolts at the top. And they are shoulder bolts. They are identical also. And there are two acorn nuts at the bottom. Then just slide the plastic cover off. You notice that the plastic cover has a rubber gasket that goes all the way around the control panel. And then there's a foam gasket that goes into a groove and it goes all the way around. Just make sure that that's in place. If it's popped out, tuck it back in. There are two metal inserts that go around the studs that the acorn nuts are on. Make sure that those are in place. If one falls out, simply put it back in. Then the next step is going to be to remove the brackets that the handlebars were held on to. There are two pieces of foam on each side. Go ahead and remove the foam. Then the brackets are held on by two nuts on each side.
brackets, there is a left and a right. This one would be the left side as you're looking at it. Just remember that you have to go into a groove between the bracket and the control box when you're putting them back on. on the left side has a little cover over it. It's just a little plastic cover. There's a hex on the inside. The whole purpose of this is to keep the nut or the stud from rubbing through any of the wires on these plugs. That'll be the only stud that has one of those plastic covers on it. And there's another six millimeter nut on the side here. on is a bunch of wires. So we're just going to slide this off the studs. Excuse me. I took the cover off of that nut and I did not remove the nut. We'll leave that in there anyway. So now, just pull the control box off and fold it down. Now as you'll notice, this one just has the single 20 amp outlet, and then the 30, and then the 240 outlet. We're going to be mounting the radio, and incidentally, Honda did put this green wire in, stretched a little bit tight, but we're going to be mounting my radio module to the bottom of the stock Honda control panel. So we're going to stick the Velcro right to the bottom of this control surface. What we're going to do is peel the protective plastic, plastic off of the adhesive, and we're going to slide this. and stick it right to the bottom of Honda's stock control. My radio module has the corresponding piece of Velcro already stuck to the back of it. What I'm going to do is stick it to Honda's control box, but I'm not going to push it all the way down against the start button. So the stock control box is going to come to right about here on my radio module. So you'll have the antenna wire coming out to one side and the main harness coming out to the other side. I'm going to shove all the wires of the main harness underneath Honda's main harness. And this is simply to get the radio lined up more easily. Let me take that phone call. Okay, I had to take that phone call real quick. But continue feeding the wires from my radio underneath the stock harness. Okay. Then when you get ready to stick my radio 
to the Honda controller, you'll notice that the Velcro that I include in my kits is very aggressive. The whole idea is, you'll notice that, again, the radio stuck up above the Honda controller just a little bit, and you don't want the radio to stick up above this surface, which is what bolts to the generator. So if you take a straight edge, you'll notice that my radio is down about eight millimeters, or if your brain works in American, that would be five sixteenths of an inch. So it is below the surface. The first thing I'm going to do is route the antenna module. The antenna itself unscrews from the base, and this is just a magnetic base. So let me lay the antenna down here. What I'm going to do is route the antenna wire so that it comes out through this hole, and you can see it from this side a whole lot better. And then we'll go ahead and screw the antenna back onto the base. Then coming out of my radio module, you'll see the main wiring harness goes on to this 8-pin connector. There are seven of the pins are actually used. So what we're going to do with this is route it back under the stock Honda harness and we're going to let it hang out the bottom and we'll come back to that in a few minutes then you'll see we have two yellow wires and in the relay the two yellow wires are used to control the economy mode. So I'm just going to route the two yellow wires over to the back of the economy mode switch. And if you look on the front of your control panel, you'll be able to see where the economy mode switch is. On this generator, it's right here. On the, I guess I will refer to it as the late model American version, it's over slightly. And then on the Canadian model, it's in the same place. But at any rate, you locate the economy mode switch. When you look at the economy mode switch, you'll see there are two wires going to it. And it doesn't matter which wire you select, but remove one of the wires. I'm going to remove the wire that has a white tracer on it. and then we'll simply cut the connector off the end of the wire. So we've removed the stock connector off the end of one of the wires. So now, you'll see that the two wires from my kit, one has a spade connector. That spade connector will go on to the tab of the switch that you removed the stock wire from.
the yellow wires are longer than they need to be because on different versions of the generator you have a longer run to the economy mode switch than on others. Okay, take the second of the two yellow wires in my kit, one with the splice connector on it, and strip a short section of the insulation off of the stock wire that you cut the terminal off of, approximately 8 millimeters or 5 sixteenths of an inch. Okay. And we'll go ahead and crimp this connector together. And tug on it just gently to make sure that it is indeed connected. Okay. So now the economy mode is able to be switched by radio. This is the relay that will be used to control the outlet. Now, if you are working on the same generator that I'm working on, there's a blue wire that goes to the bottom 120 amp outlet. You notice the red wire from this circuit breaker goes from this circuit breaker to the top 120 amp outlet, and the blue wire goes from this circuit breaker to the bottom 120 amp outlet. I normally choose to make the bottom outlet switched. If you are working on a Canadian version, it'll be the same. If you're working on what I will refer to as the late style American version, this circuit breaker will power the first set of 20 amp GFCI outlets and this circuit breaker will power the next set of 20 amp GFCI. At any rate, doesn't matter what you're working on, you'll simply remove the wire that is stock from the position that you want the relay to control. It is not necessary to remove the outlet from the control box. If you find it's easier for you to remove the outlet, to get the wire on and off, then go for it. On this particular generator, I'm going to make the bottom outlet of the 120 remote controllable. So the first thing is squeeze the little tab on the connector that goes to the circuit breaker. And if you see what I mean, when you squeeze this little tab right here, it will allow it to unlatch from the circuit breaker. And then loosen up the screw at the other end of the wire. So you'll remove the wire from the circuit breaker to the outlets that you want switched. And this does not matter whether you're using the early style American or the late style American, or the Canadian version. Like I say, on the late style American, you will now have two 20 amp breakers, or two 20 amp outlets that are switched. You'll notice on my relay, and again, there is more than enough wire to reach all the way to where you're looking for, and that's because the fact that the different versions of generator have different layouts and you'll need more wire on some. One of the wires has a spade connector. Simply plug that on to the stock relay. The other wire has an open ring just like the uh, original blue wire that we removed and plug that onto the screw that we removed the original stock wire from. and then we tighten down the screw.
I'm using a double offset screwdriver to reach in between the outlets to get that wire on and off. If you don't have a double offset screwdriver, simply remove the outlet from the control panel and then you've got all the room in the world to work. Then you can fold these wires down and out of the way so that it won't be interfering with the main brackets when you go to install the panel. What I'm going to do now is just going to lay the relay right down here and I'm going to use a zip tie to tie the wiring harnesses together. And this is not critical. All it does is holds things in place for me. So when I go to put the control box back onto the generator, I don't have to have three hands to do the job. So that'll keep the relay from dropping down and getting a wire pinched. And I want to make sure that the harness from my radio is just routed down to where it will come out above the inverter module. So now we'll make sure that everything is in place correctly. I don't see anything that's in any danger. And we'll just go ahead and lift it up into place. I'm just gently going to hang it on the studs. None of the wires are pinched, and this is just a test fit. This is not the final assembly. And here's our harness from the radio, and it's long enough to plug into the uh, remote harness. Okay. Now we're going to work with the remote control harness and the fuse block. And the reason I need to work with the fuse block is. I want it set up to where my radio can control the fuel injection computer. Because the fuel injection computer in standby mode pulls a tremendous amount of power compared to this little battery. And in order to do this, let me show you real quickly, the fuse block is this light washing the color out. You'll see in the fuse block, if you look up at it, there's a little plastic tab right here that you can push down on. I'll let you hold the flashlight so you can see what the camera actually sees. But you would push down on this like this. So you push down on it and just push back on the fuse block so that the fuse block will now come loose so that you can work with it. Then. Go to the inside of the radio case up in here and you'll see where the wireless remote control plug. Can you see this plug here? This piece of plastic. There are two tabs and I'm going to squeeze in on them so that we can remove the remote control plug. And if you can't see them clearly now, I'll show them to you once we get it apart so that you can see them. Okay. So we've got that out of the way. Let me uh, put the control panel up into place loosely so that we can do the rest of the work that we need to do. Okay, 
Here is the harness that comes out of the radio. You'll remember that. Now this is the wireless harness that's from Honda. And it is plugged in to a round hole in the bottom of the control panel. And you'll see that there are two tabs right here. And what you do is simply squeeze those two tabs together. You can either reach in with a pair of needle nose pliers, squeeze them together, and push it down. Or what I did is I took a screwdriver and I pushed in on one tab and I rocked it a little bit. And then I pushed in on the other tab and rocked it the rest of the way down so that this would come out. And of course, on the fuse holder, what I did was I pushed down on this center tab and slid the whole thing backwards. So now we get to the fun part. There's two fuses. There's a 15 amp and a 3 amp. Let's go ahead and pull the fuses out for now. And then on the 15 amp fuse, try to get us just enough room to see it. You'll see on the 15 amp fuse there are two large wires and on the 3 amp fuse there are two small wires. We're going to take the fused side of the 15 amp, which is going to be green with the orange tracer. So we're going to remove this fuse pin from the back of the fuse holder so we can tie into it. If you look, I don't know if you can see with the camera, in two of the unused fuse places, there are little tabs right down here. And you see that they're spring bound. You can take a terminal tool like this or a real small screwdriver. Screwdriver like this and fold. In fact, I'll use the screwdriver that way just to show that it can be done. And I want to remove the green with the orange tracer. So I'm going to fold that tab down just a little bit so that that wire now comes out. And now I can work with it. And that is the fuse side. The power comes in on the black with the yellow, goes through the fuse, and returns on the green with an orange tracer. My kit comes with two wires with uh, 090 disconnects on one end. You'll see that one of the wires is slightly larger diameter than the other, and that would be the pink one. So we're going to take the pink wire and strip about 8 millimeters of insulation off the end of it. You'll notice that there is a hole drilled in the fitting that goes into the uh, um, fuse holder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the wire through that hole. Easier said than done. And just let it fold out of the way just like that for a moment.
Let me take this phone call. Okay, I just had to take care of that phone call. What we're going to do is we're going to solder this wire into this connector just to make sure it doesn't come loose. this phone too. Okay, so now that we've got our lead soldered into the side of this, we're going to take and put this right back in the way it came out. And remember that this side faced the center. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in and then I'll let you zoom in on it and see exactly what I meant by that statement. is worth a thousand words if you can see what I meant by that now it's right back in the way it used to be okay now we're gonna go to the fused side because what it does is power goes in through this one through the 15 amp fuse and back out through here. Power goes into the um, 3 amp fuse through this, goes across and comes back out through here. So now we're going to remove this brown with a yellow tracer and it removes the same way. Just push that little tab over to release it. Now we've got it out. Same procedure on it. Only it will use the slightly smaller diameter red wire as opposed to the heavy diameter pink. And if you need a memory aid on that, of course the smaller diameter wire goes to the 3 amp fuse and the heavier diameter wire goes to the 15 amp fuse. And we're going to run this the same way. I'm going to feed the wire through that small hole. We're going to push it down where it sits nice and flush there. Let me put some tension on that wire. And then I'll solder it in place. just for a minute before we go grabbing it, giving ourselves third degree burns. <clears throat> simply with the addition of another wire. And these extra fittings that we're putting in here simply allow me to take a fused 12 volt signal lead for switching turn the fuel injection computer on and off because after testing I discovered that Honda's fuel injection computer 
draws a tremendous amount of power in standby mode. And the neat thing about remote controls is that you should be able to use them in standby mode. So this way we can control this generator's voracious appetite for power. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the fuse box cover or fuse box, slide it up into the brackets. As you can see, it slides up into the brackets here. And then we're just going to pull it towards us. And you'll see that this little tab clicks into place right there. And now the fuse box is back in the stock position. And now we'll take our two fuse. Okay, the fuse to the far left, or excuse me, the slot to the far left is the 15 amp fuse. The slot next to it is the 3 amp. I recommend you leave these fuses out because if you have the fuses in, these leads are hot and if you inadvertently touch it to the ground terminal, the battery, excuse me, the pink lead is hot. The red one's not hot because the key's off. But if you inadvertently touch this to the ground terminal, the battery, or touch it to the chassis of the generator, you'll blow the, the fuses. So I recommend you leave the fuses out until you get this next step done. So we've got the fuse holder plugged in, and this is the remote control plug. You'll notice that there are three empty slots. There's one in the top row, and we will not be using that one at all. There are two in the bottom row, and I'm going to refer to the attaching pin as the top. This down here would be the bottom. So this slot here, I'm going to refer to as the second one from the left on the bottom row. And that's where the larger wire, or pink in color, goes to. And on the generator radio module, it'll plug into that eventually. So if you look at this, you'll see this is the way that it needs to plug in because there's a slot right here where a locking tab engages. If you put it in upside down, there is no slot or locking tab. So what we're going to do is take this wire and bend this out of the way and just push this in. And you'll hear an audible click when it's locked in. So now the second one from the left, bottom row, has a wire in it. Now we will do the 3 amp lead. And the same rules apply. Make sure that the open window faces up, smooth side down, and we're going to put it in the bottom row, extreme left. And again, you feel an audible click when it goes into place. Now, if you're feeling brave, you could push that up into place and you'd be good to go. What I'm going to do is a quick test on it before we go and put everything together. In order to test it, we need to ground the control box. So I'm just going to hook onto this terminal and hook the other end to one of the threaded studs. So this is solidly connected to the frame of the generator. And now, I'm going to take 15 amp fuse and put it into the end slot. And the 5 or the 3 amp fuse and put it into this second slot over. Then, the harness from my radio we want to make sure that it's not touching anything or shorting out against anything. Make sure it's got plenty of play in it. And we're going to loop it around and plug it into, excuse me, goes in like this. It'll only go one way, so you're good there. And we're going to plug it into this. And I'm not snapping this up into place yet, because we want to make sure that we got everything correct. So now, in theory, Everything should work. So we'll take the key. And if you've got one of these and you've played with it, you already know that the starting procedure is to turn the key to the on position. 
at which point the fuel injection computer comes on and then you would hit the start button. Being that we're in a small room, I'm going to hit the start button to see if something happens and then I'll shut the key off instantly so it doesn't go starting up on us because we don't really need it to start. Okay. So now we have it hooked up to where it works and we've seen that it works in stock. So now to test the radio, I'm going to turn the key back to the on position and because I've determined in testing that Honda's fuel injection computer along with the LED pack and so on pulls 140 milliamps standby current, I want it to be able to turn that on and off so that it'll extend the standby. So button number two shuts off Honda's fuel injection computer. So if you wanted to run it on remote control, let me go ahead and shut everything down again. Incidentally, it sets everything back to the stock position. If you shut the key to the off and turn it back on, everything's in default position again. So now if I wanted to start it by remote control, I would hit either this start button here or button one on my remote control. And I'm gonna hit button one just for a moment. And if it starts to crank, then I'll shut this off again because I don't wanna start it. There's no point in it. Ooh. It wants to run. Okay, so now we have validated that indeed the radio does work. You can breathe a sigh of relief and get yourself a glass of iced tea or whatever. So now what I'm gonna do, turn the key to the off position, pull it out, pull my little jumper leads off and out of the way. I'm going to pull the nuts off of either side and take one good look back there now and make sure that all the wires are where they need to be. control panel back up into place on each end. As you remember, we have a third <coughs> six millimeter nut. Goes right down here on the bottom. Now we shine our flashlights back down there and make sure that we didn't pinch any wires anywhere. These are my radio wires. They're nicely out of the way. Okay, at this point, we can go ahead and snap the remote control plug. You can see the hole that it goes up into. We're going to push this in here and then slide this straight up and it engages the top of this. I am going to go ahead and take the tie wrap and tie wrap this harness to the negative battery terminal wire. That way all the wires stay in a nice clean loop. OK. 
okay. <coughs> so now if you played with one of these, you notice that it doesn't quite work like any of the other Honda generators. And that's because it is fuel injected. And Honda wanted to make things difficult on us. <coughs> but now, instead of having a key switch that you just turn all the way over and it starts, you have a master power switch. And then you have a start button. And when you hit the start button, you will hear the fuel injection pump kick on for about two seconds. And then it'll engage the starter motor and it'll start the thing up. If you wanted to switch it into economy mode, you would use this switch here. And if you wanted to shut off power to one of these outlets by the stock on the method, you'd have to simply unplug it. And now, with my remote control, the procedure is actually quite similar. In order to arm the system, you turn the key on. And now everything's armed. But if you don't want to run the generator yet, but you want to cons or conserve battery life, you would hit button number two. And you'll notice that shuts off the fuel injection computer. So now the only thing that is live is my radio. And it only pulls about 25 milliamps, which with this battery, you'll have a couple of days of standby power as long as you have disarmed the stock fuel injection computer. If you wanted to start the generator and you forgot that it was unarmed, you hit button number one, nothing happens. No big deal. So if you hit button number one a few times and nothing happens, that's a good memory aid. You then know to hit button number two to arm the system. Now the fuel injection computer is live. And then hit button number one. And I'm going to go ahead and shut it off as soon as it starts to crank because I don't want to gas us out of here. So everything works. We'll go ahead and start putting the cabinetry back together. Okay, so now that we've tested the system, we can go ahead and get ready to put the cabinetry back together. First step is to put the brackets for the handlebars in place. And remember there is a left and a right. This one would be the right. sections of foam back in place. Tuck them down in here nicely. fuse box, snap it into place. This blue wire, as you remember, used to connect this circuit breaker to this outlet. You'll no longer be using that. And this is the original plug that was snapped into 
the remote control harness, and you won't be using that now. So you can set both of those aside. Let's not forget to put the plastic cover. You'll notice that this cover has a hex cut into it. And that goes over this six millimeter nut just to keep it from rubbing through the wires. We'll take the antenna and that will feed through the battery door. We'll make sure that all the rubber gaskets are in place. None of them is damaged. Feed the antenna wire through the battery door. We want to make sure that we don't inadvertently pinch the antenna wire as we're putting this together. Two acorn nuts. Screw them onto the bottom. Our two shoulder bolts with six millimeter threaded areas go into each side, and you will have to push on the plastic cover. doing is compressing all that foam that they shoved in there. Take the handlebars and just hang them by the latch mechanism. Both sides started. Oh, we got sparking down. Okay. Okay, those go up nicely. The antenna, like I stated earlier has a magnetic base on it. So you can stick it on the metal gas cap or on the metal EFI plate or somewhere on the top of the generator to get the greatest range. Route the antenna wire and you'll notice that the battery door has a tab that cuts out for the use of the Honda stock wired remote control. It would go on here and a wired remote control cable would plug right through there. So I'm going to go ahead and take that out and the antenna wire will now feed through that slot.
trim the plastic up so it'll look nicer. sure that you don't step on the antenna wire or whatever. If you move the antenna to the back corner of the fuel tank, the antenna wire is stretched fairly snug so it won't get down and get tangled around your feet. Or if you wanted to, loop it around the fuel cap and it keeps it fairly snug. And that way this antenna wire doesn't fall down and get caught on the ground or get dragged around or something like that because you do not want to risk tearing that. And that should just about do it.